So I can start. One minute. Just one. Just give me a minute and then I'm going to restart the live session. And then, of course, this is a recording. I'll just cut the first part. <laughs> Okay, you can begin. Thank you. Okay. Um, hello, everyone, and thanks for joining this session. My name is Ivy. Um, I describe myself as a creative technologist. I've worked in very many roles in technology from being a developer to being a trainer to being a manager, a business owner, and very many roles. So I'm very happy to be here, to be sharing with you. Uh, the title was how to leverage free tools to create uh, social media content. Um, but I know the title says content creation 101. I think it's more or less the same thing. So what we'll be dealing with mostly is some of the free tools that you can be able to use to create content, um, some frameworks that can help you create content that uh, generates engagement and also with a small focus on LinkedIn and um, some AI tools that you can use. So of course, this wouldn't be a comprehensive uh, webinar since it's such a short time. However, I'll, after the session, I'll link a document that I've shared some resources and links that you can use after the session to maybe dive more deeply. Um, in that document, I'll also have linked um, some free courses that are offered, some on LinkedIn and some by Google that you can use for those, for those of you who want to dive more deeply. So I'll just be touching on the free tools that you can use. Okay. So maybe before I start, for those who are on the Zoom platform, um, Maybe you can share some of your expectations of what you hope to learn or what you hope to take away. You can just type in the chat box. I'll give you a minute to do that so that you can just set some expectations before we begin. Uh, please uh, feel free to type in your expectations of what you hope to learn from this uh, webinar. Okay, um, I can see you expect to learn the free tools to promote social media, branding, planning to learn how to use social media to build content that resonates with the community. Okay, um, I think that's, we will have learned some free tools to help you um, create engaging content. Um, Helen says, expecting to learn how to use AI to build content and brand. Okay, so how I've structured this uh, session is we'll go through the slides, then, Afterwards, we can do some live demonstration using some of the AI tools that I will mention. And we can also be able to, for the live demonstration, we can be able to create um, some content. We can create a poster using um, a design tool that I will mention. Then we can use the AI tools to generate the content that we like. And then we can be able to post and I'll show you how to schedule um, some of the posts, schedule and post. Okay then. Oh, 
thank you for those expectations. I think we can go to the next um, our agenda. So yes, so the agenda here says content. So you want to create content. That's uh, the first section we'll look at. Then we'll look at some of the tools and platforms um, from taking notes, um, scheduling, learning, and the and creating the content that you love. Then we shall look at creative ways to use content to make money and grow your personal brand. I'll be mentioning a local Kenyan tool because most of us are hopefully based here in Kenya. I'll also mention another tool that you can use to monetize your content, which is more international. So by the end, you'll have learned about it. All of these um, tools are linked in a document I will share after the session. So, okay, yeah, and then we'll do questions, engagement, and I'll also now do, together we can do the live demonstration. Okay, so content creation um, is really about connecting with your target audience. The goal of any piece of content should be to connect with your target audience. Now, I know that your target audience can vary depending on which, which platform you are using and also depending on your unique goals. So sometimes um, your target audience can be maybe a future employer. I know most of us have seen posts on LinkedIn that are not targeted, uh, like when the person creates the post, their goal is not to make a sale or to redirect you to their page, but they want to attract lawyer. So you um, maybe let's say you want to get a job in as a web developer. So you're posting a lot about maybe different tools to show how uh, to show your prowess. So I think the first step now when you want to create content is picking the best content according to your objectives and your ideal consumer. So this can vary um, if you also want to be an influencer. This can vary also from platform to platform. Um, the content you post on Instagram is not the content you post on Twitter. Even the algorithms are different. Um, the content you post on LinkedIn is very different from, you can have the same, same post, but really the way you will phrase it on Twitter is different from how you will phrase it on LinkedIn, on threads, and on TikTok. Yeah, so content varies from blog posts. For those of you who have maybe a personal website, or if you're using uh, tools like Medium and you're writing a lot of content, maybe in the format of articles, so blog, blog posts are a type of content. Uh, you have social media posts. Uh, for those of you who are still using Facebook, uh, you have emails. For those of you with um, organizations or even from your website, so where you regularly share newsletters. And we also have technical writing. This type of writing is if you're teaching people like tutorials, like I can also do a post on how to create content and that would be like technical writing because I'm sharing free tools and things like that. Or also you can do, for those of you who have created websites or for those of you who are from Pony Techno Girls, you've learned how to use Flutter to create an app. You can write an article on how to use Flutter to maybe grow your brand or create a website or create an app. Now that would be, um, that would be a type of technical writing. And it's a really, really um, lucrative field. So you can look into that. Then we also have quizzes, um, podcasts. Um, I think quizzes are mostly popular with um, Instagram or on your blog posts, I mean, for websites. And then we also have podcasts. These days, there are very many tools for you to record a podcast. Um, I've seen a way where you can use Twitter, the tweet space. Like it's very easy to use. You can go record maybe yourself in conversation with a friend and you can actually use that content and post it on Spotify or on Anchor. And this is a very easy way for you to start a podcast without necessarily having um, the studio equipment you use. You need 
or fancy types of tools, just going live on TweetSpace, um, downloading that and sharing that on Spotify and other podcasts. Spotify, which is a streaming, a music streaming platform, and also Apple, you can create a playlist. And there are people who have built careers just by creating playlists. Like you can you can special playlists on Spotify. You're sharing that playlist on platforms like Twitter. And that can be an easy way for you to get um, into music because you're somehow creating awareness because there's a lot of music and it's impossible to know what to listen to without these curated playlists. Creating a playlist is free, provided you have a Spotify account. And we also have now videos, um, advertisements and stories. So stories, I think we're all familiar with on Instagram and videos we are all familiar with, uh, the short videos for advertisements. Yeah, so here I'd shared um, some of the different types of content. So we have the text posts. Um, as I told you, it varies. So if it's a text post, what you post on Facebook will not be what you post on Instagram. Because something like Instagram, no one has time to read long formats. Um, Twitter is also very short format. Uh, LinkedIn, um, you can actually do long, long, long post formats, even articles. So what you want to do is when you're creating your personal brand, is you use different. If you post a photo on Instagram, you do a short post. You can put a link in that Instagram that redirects you to maybe Twitter, and then the Twitter redirects you to LinkedIn, and then maybe the LinkedIn will direct you to your personal website or your Facebook page. So in this way, you're utilizing all four platforms. I'm going to mention a free tool you can use to synchronize all of these posts um, and schedule them. So, yeah, then you also have images, stories, uh, user-generated content. For those of you with websites, um, your alumni uh, from your previous users, you can use that to generate content and to even share it. So even retweeting, um, re like when you do a post on Twitter, then someone shares it that is a form of that is also content it's just not generated by you it's generated by your consumers and by your users even linkedin has a repost so that's also quite uh, popular that you also have polls and surveys uh, i wish i could have included some of the great free tools you can use to conduct polls and surveys but i know linkedin almost all platforms these days have a uh, format for you to do a survey on your um, using a post. So you don't necessarily have to use, um, I was going to mention type form. Um, yeah, so you don't necessarily have to use those dedicated survey tools unless you want to reach a huge, huge number. But yeah, you can use the same, same tools to conduct a survey. Yeah, and live streams, then we have GIFs. Um, with design tools like Canva, you can be able to create um, GIFs. I, I call them GIFs, GIFs, like those. Um, it's like a short video, like a compressed, compressed uh, video. Those are becoming very, very popular. Um, yeah, and mostly lighthearted just to um, yeah, generate content. Don't worry if you're interested in this um, slide, I can share it in a PDF format afterwards. So we can go to... Now the free tools for content. So for any time you want to create content, um, I think the number one tool that is not a technological tool is you have to be good at taking notes and documenting the documenting, taking doing a lot of research for you to just do a post that maybe 
um, has like less than 300 words, you need to have done quite some research. Let's say if you're doing a post on how to, like let's say how to leverage free tools to create um, social media, you have to do a lot of research. Um, and when you're researching, you're just picking up snippets from maybe one website to another, you're lifting also from books. So I think taking notes is super important. And I wanted to highlight a tool which is free. It's called Notion. I'm going to show you when we do the live demo, I'm going to, we're going to go through all of this um, or like at least four of these tools that I'm going to mention. So I hope many of you have heard of Notion or if you've never heard of it, it's a very, very powerful tool. It is also AI powered account, but I think for you to be able to access um, it's freemium. So that means it's free for everyone. But then if you want those special abilities, you have to pay a subscription. But it is so, so good. You can be able to collect so many snippets, um, write your notes, write your thoughts. You can embed websites on it. Um, you can be able to collaborate. Like let's say you're creating the same um like you have a team of three people, Nani Water, you're on the social, all of you are doing the same marketing or you're working on the same project together. You can be able to share your notes live with the three people you're collaborating with. They can be able to add. So yeah, it's a great project management tool. Um, I know companies like Google, um, I mean like not just Google, but just very, very big companies are now using Notion to collaborate, manage tasks. It's surpassed some project management tools like Trello. I don't know if some of you have heard of Trello, uh, but yeah. So Notion is very, very good to organize your notes. Um, you can even organize your content, create different pages. You can even create a small website or a landing page on Notion. So it's, I cannot, um, Yani, I, I cannot overemphasize how powerful it is. And now it also has some AI tools. It can be able to create links and connections for you within your notes. Um, it can be able to generate for you content from your notes. So that's super, super powerful. And apart from that, um, other tools you can use um, is Google Keep. Google Keep, I think, is free for everyone who has a Gmail account and Evernote. I know some of you have heard of Evernote because sometimes you need to um, highlight content from your from books, maybe an ebook that you're reading, and you need content from a website. So I find that Evernote is also just as powerful at synchronizing all your notes, uh, synchronizing all your images, so that when it's time to create content, you can be able to brainstorm make a connection within your notes and use that um, to guide your content. And even on a personal level, I think in this information technology, I mean, information in this information era, like any kind of information you have um, can be monetized. And these days it's not really about, um, I mean, like skills do matter, but we're moving to a direction where information is, powerful like skills are also powerful but information is power so every person has a wealth of knowledge if you're reading a book, you want to be able to use these notes to empower your content you want to be able to use these notes to help you generate content and stay on top of your personal brand or on top of maybe the work you do so yeah and then for schedule for scheduling i've mentioned hootsuite and buffer Hootsuite um, currently is not free. I think you need a subscription for it, but we have Buffer, which is also a new uh, planning, scheduling, um, cross-platform management tool. So you can be able to plan all your Instagram posts, Twitter posts, LinkedIn posts, synchronize them and schedule them for posting. You can even create content. Yeah, the whole, you can create content for three months and Buffer will be able to post it for you cross-platform regularly. So it's a powerful way to automate your posting. Um,
uh, right now is free. Um, and I think the subscription fee is better than, I mean, Ikochini is less than Hootsuite. So for design and creation, um, we have Copy AI. Copy AI is an AI powered copywriter. I was also going to mention Grammarly or Quillbot, but I've been using Copy AI and it's very, very good. It can rephrase for you. In a, you can use it to rephrase a post. You can use it to, you can rephrase a post. I'm going to show you, we'll do a live demo. Then I'm going to show you how you can make it sound like you can say the same thing, um, then you can make it sound professional, you can make it sound friendly, you can make it, you can tailor it to different uh, to different audiences. And so you can also, transitively, you can also use it to generate like the same post, but Sasa, it's going to be rephrased differently for an Instagram audience, rephrased differently for a Twitter audience. So if you want the same content, but to appeal to maybe a more, like to maybe smarter people, you use Copy AI to rephrase. So apart from that, um, you can also use it to create uh, multiple content types, marketing copy. So for those of you who cannot afford a copywriter to generate catchy phrases, um, Copy AI is very, very instrumental. Apart from that, we also now have Chat GPT. Chat GPT, hey, I think for me, it's it goes even beyond. It can help you brainstorm. It can help you generate content. Help you stretch. Consider Chat GPT from OpenAI is like having a, an assistant, and even the free version uh, is quite powerful. Maybe because it's still at the early stages, but I know you can really use it to take your content to the next level so yeah and we'll do a live demo to show you just how powerful uh, these tools are then of course we have canva which is a free to use online graphic design i think for they also have like a different package for those of you who are having like a non-profit like the price is quite subsidized i think um, i personally pay for the personal subscription which is around six dollars so quite affordable for the amount of work that you can that you can do like if you, if you're creating an ebook you can use canva to write uh, to create an ebook to create a comic to create infographics you can use it i'm actually currently using canva for my presentation um you can use it to brainstorm I, any of the uses are limitless so and it's free to use if you have an account of course, if you want to access um, more powerful features, there's that subscription, but I've told you it's still a bit manageable if you have a small budget for your team. And I think if you're working for a nonprofit, they have a package that, yeah, I think they have a nice nonprofit structure that is very, very subsidized. So yeah, you can create it to create your entire brand and synchronize start to finish. So emphasize just how powerful Canva is. Some of you are already familiar with it, but it's an amazing free to use um, online graphic design tool. Then now when it comes to monetization, I wanted to emphasize on, now you've created your content, let's say whatever content it is, you've created it, but you want to be able to make money from it. I am so impressed by the new young Kenyans because I've been following a page and this idea like they started a magazine where they write articles and they sell these articles on hustle sasa for around maybe 25 shillings 50 shillings depending on the amount of um research you've done or you know it's just a easy way to monetize and you can be able to actually use hustle sasa to sell if it's and you can sell articles you can sell um templates if you're a designer, you can sell posters, you can sell any kind of tool that is digital. You can use Hustle Sasa um, to monetize and to sell. So like I've told you, information is power. I can even go and sell this presentation on Hustle Sasa. Maybe I can sell it at 50 shillings, I can sell it at 100, depending on, 
depending on what you want. But this is an increasing trend now that we are seeing. Even with Instagram, everything is being monetized in the sense that you can now even use your personal Instagram page. Um, they're about to roll it out in African countries, but I know it's already started in uh, Uko Canada and in the US. Like people can subscribe to see your stories. People can pay a small subscription monthly, just like other part platforms like Patreon. I don't know if you've heard of Patreon, but Patreon is also good, especially if you're a nonprofit. You can be, you can have your supporters instead of always asking people maybe to raise money or donate. You can ask someone to be a supporter. What this means is every, because Patreon can be linked to your PayPal or to your wallet. So every 30th of the month, your supporters can be paying you $10. And what this means is you can, maybe they can have access to your newsletter. They can have access to maybe your personal vlogs or maybe a podcast. So it's a great way for you to receive support from your community. Uh, without you having to regularly ask. It's a great way. Um, and you can have different tiers. Like maybe there are some people who pay $10 a month. There's some people who pay $1 a month. But it's a good way to make sure that um, you're receiving some kind of support. And also the people who tend to pay for your content are more supportive than uh, the people who just engage with your content and not necessarily subscribe. So uh, Patreon. Hustle Sasa. Then we also have Gumroad. Gumroad is just like Hustle Sasa, but it's more international where you sell digital tools and products. Um, so many people are using it to sell articles and e course You can actually create, you can use ChatGPT to generate for you a curriculum on a course. Um, use Notion to document, study, learn, and then you can use Canva to design the e course have it out, uh, download it in a PDF format. Then now you use Gumroad to reach an international audience. You sell it on Gumroad and you can also sell it locally on Hustle Sasa. So this information I'm giving you for free and I hope you'll be able to use it. Um, yeah, maybe next time it won't be free. <laughs> so we also have uh, Medium and Substack. Medium and Substack is great for those of you who are writers. Writing is a form of content. Um, especially long post formats like articles or use Flutter. You can start writing even how to use WordPress, how to get started in web design, any kind of content. You can use Medium and Medium is also like Patreon, but just for writing. You can have a community that subscribes to your writing, just like Substack. So let's say you're putting out one article every week, and this can be even in-depth research-based um, research um, blogs. Like let's say if you're a journalist and you're researching the effects of caffeine or the effects of illicit brew, um, you can write very engaging, very thought-provoking uh, content that people subscribe for so and it's a great way also for you to build a good portfolio because now if people have subscribed to you you want to be able to give them content on a weekly basis or on a bi-weekly basis so it's a great way to keep you accountable it's a great way for you to enhance yourself grow yourself um, especially for you as a writer and just improve your skills in general so yeah, I think we can go on to the next. We look at the questions. Okay. Um, yes, so based on the, the free tools I've mentioned, based on the platform you're going to use, I think each one is going to be, each one, is still critical based on whatever you're going to do. We're going to do a live demo and I'm going to show you how easy it is to go from not creating content to creating good content that engages with people and that can earn you some money. So here I just wanted to mention like your audience is very, very important. Like I mentioned, different audiences um, 
your goals, your objectives, and also your individuality. Like who you are is so important to any work you do, especially if it's your personal brand. Like there's someone, let's say someone like me who uh, I'm a creative, but at the same time, I also work in tech. Like it's very rare or it's, it's very unique. So I can be able to create unique content, um, let's say as compared to someone maybe who is an engineer and is an engineer and a writer. So that person would be, maybe be able to do content that is very, very different for me. So learning who your unique audience is, is critical to your success in on any social media, especially when it comes to LinkedIn, which I'm going to touch on in the next um, slide. So I think I mentioned I'm going to share a Google document. Um, yeah, in that document, I've linked a free course on LinkedIn on how to on the very, it has, it's quite in-depth. It tackles the, there's a new, what do you call it? There's a new feature on LinkedIn called creator mode what, that you can use to analyze. And maybe I'll show you using my own personal account when you're doing the live demo, but you can use it to track, um, see how your content is getting traction. You can also be able to use SEO, which is search engine optimization. And they can also, you can do a lot. So when it comes to LinkedIn, you have to know who your audience is. If you want to create content on LinkedIn to secure a job, you have to tailor your bio and your content in a way that is appealing to headhunters or to the industry you want to get in. If you're using LinkedIn maybe to sell your content, then it's very, very different. You have to tailor your content in a way that is acceptable for your consumers, like let's say you're only creating content for young women in technology. It's very different from someone who is using LinkedIn to secure their first job. So marketing your personal brand or just building a community, that in itself is a goal. And so I cannot emphasize how important it is to take some time um, to think about why you're creating the content. Is it to build a community? Is it to make more money? Is it to increase engagement? Is it to you know, uh, whatever it is. So yeah, um, then now we can go to LinkedIn. So I think, I'll, as I've said, I'll share a course um, on LinkedIn and learning all the different tools, the different hacks that you can use. Um, it's going to be at the, the documents that I'm going to share. But just to touch on a few things is, one, you have to set up your profile for success, having a good headshot. And for those of you who are in Mombasa, I'm starting to see a trend where it's very cheap to go and get a headshot. I think with 200 shillings, you can get up to maybe five digital images. So it's also just about you being organized enough to take your profile seriously, getting some professional headshots done, um, putting a nice banner, then I also want to highlight the headline. I'm going to show you what a headline is on LinkedIn, but the headlines on LinkedIn and the post, everything on LinkedIn uses, the algorithm on LinkedIn is just is similar to the algorithm on Twitter in that it uses a lot of analytics and you can be able to use keywords uh, to be able to rope in the your consumer or your ideal audience. So by using hashtags, using keywords, you can be able to create content that generates you um, engagement. So for those of you who don't know what search engine op optimization is, I'd recommend, maybe I'll add it to that list of resources. Uh, Google has a free SEO course. It's nothing difficult. It's just being able to look for the trendy keywords that people are searching for, let's say if it's in technology or if it's in design, and now being able to create content using those keywords so that when the algorithms are searching for content, they can be easily, or like when someone keys in specific words in LinkedIn, they can be able to find your content. So there's no use for you to create content that is not being found. There's no use for you to create content 
that is not generating you like you need to put this online and this automated tools to work so if you're going to generate content make sure you're also using keywords you're using the right hashtags and you can even be able to create your own hashtags such that when someone searches for a specific word um like let's say if you work as a designer in kenya if i go to google and i search designer in kenya it can be able to pull up some of the posts you've done on linkedin it can be able to pull up some of your tweets so what this means is you're also putting your personal brand on the line and you have to be vulnerable and you have to be willing to open yourself up to the world so this is why i emphasize um if you're on LinkedIn, make sure and you want to create content and you want to go to the next level, make sure that you've opened up your platforms. There's no use for you to have a private account on Twitter and on LinkedIn also your account is private. On Instagram, your account is private. That means no one will be able to engage with your content. But if you want to grow your brand, increase your visibility, open up your brand, open up your name, um, use your name in the way you want it to be used. Of course, it's a risk because we all know um, being visible also comes with its um, cons, but at the same time, it's a risk that's going to pay. A lot of the times we have people who you're not creating content on LinkedIn, you're not creating content on Twitter. When I go to look at your Twitter account, Akuna, like eh, Uko private, you're private, you're not showing anything. So yeah, being comfortable with being seen, it's like being comfortable, being comfortable being seen is going to pay off or rather, yeah, it's it's very, very necessary. So then the other thing is, you know, creating relevant content, which I think I've touched on and not engaging and connecting, not just you generating content, but generating content that gets engagement. If you find that you're writing posts um and you're only getting maybe one comment sometimes no one even likes then that is already an indicator for you that your content is not engaging and i'd maybe ask you to learn like those to learn such engine optimization if you are let me use the example of pony techno girls and you're mostly involved with young women in technology then you want to be able to know use google trends google analytics google they have a page for what are people talking about if it's ai if it's um a tech for good and you want to be able to include those hashtags in your there's no shame in using hashtags to you know there's no shame because you want to be visible so i know maybe sometimes you can get caught in that like you don't want to look like you're trying so hard but at the same time you won't be able to get the visibility you want if you're not um utilizing some of these tools if you if you're not trying to stay on top of the game google is a very competitive algorithm sometimes you actually have to pay um for those of you if you if you have like a google analytics account like people pay big money to appear on search engines even on linkedin you pay for the accounts that have uh the premium accounts are actually are prioritized so for you to be able to be visible and for your content to be visible whether it's on instagram whether it's on tiktok whether it's on reddit whether it's on whatever platform it is um you have to be using search engine optimization or at least some of the principles which is keywords using keywords in your posts uh, using hashtags that can be tracked and traced and also using some form of analytics so now yeah so here on engage and Con connect i want to say you have to learn how to write good content and how to use content frameworks that actually work with the algorithm and generate engagement so on the next slide um um i said understanding algorithms and content frameworks so maybe this is a bit uh maybe more technical but i'll try to make it i try to make it more accessible to anyone even for those who are not developers so for most platforms on social media even blogs and websites the first hours are crucial to any post like the first five hours you make a post whether it's on twitter whether it's on instagram 
if it does well within that time frame, like let's say if you get five comments, if you get five likes, 10 likes, 100 likes, then you are more likely to see a lot of engagement. So if you've done a post and it's three days and you have not gotten any kind of feedback, not even a single retweet, then most likely how the algorithm works is this algorithm almost works on principles, kamazilez are the Bible. Like those who have more will always, always receive more. But if you're not getting any engagement, even your account will not be getting any engagement. That's the sad truth. So we don't have time to maybe go into how these algorithms work, but that's essentially how it does work. So Hootsuite, um, they did a study on Twitter and found that Twitter will prioritize a tweet based on how popular it is with it. It's the interaction they get based on the people that are seeing your tweets right away. So there's a solution now for this. If you want to get more interactions from the people that view your content, the easiest way is to make sure you're hooking people. So somehow you have to use traditional advertising and traditional marketing strategies. So a content framework um, is an easy way to organize your content to ensure that people will be hooked by it and enjoy reading. So there are a few styles that you likely see over the internet. And an, ex an example from Twitter is, if you're an overthinker, read this, then you see someone has posted a thread. So that hook is a content framework. We're going to use, um, in my demo, we're going to use ChatGPT to de demonstrate a hook. A hook is something like, let's say if I want to post content for young women in tech, I'll say, you're struggling in your career because you're not doing these three things. It almost sounds like clickbait, but it's somehow, it's about attention. You want to catch the attention of your consumer. You want to be able to rope them in. If you haven't been able to, if someone, if I read your post and I'm not attracted by it in like the first five seconds, I'll have already scrolled to the next post. I'll have already scrolled to the next post. So it's really about, not just creating good and informative content, but it's also about storytelling, creating content that gets um, the, it gets your audience attracted and it gets, it captures someone's attention. So yeah, I'm going to show you how to use um, ChatGPT for that or copy AI also for the same. So um, what else? Okay, so maybe some of the trends that we are seeing in content creation and a trend that I'm personally going to jump on is we are seeing a massive boost in personal branding and social selling. So if you're part of a, a nonprofit, a CBO, an organization or a brand, people want to know who you are. When we hear Pony Techno Girls, we want to think about like the faces you know if we talk about nike we want to we want it to be associated maybe with kipchoge when we think about a certain product we want to see the human faces behind so like what i was saying you have to be able to open up yourself to the world to put your name out there to be associated with your brands so i know maybe for those who are private and personal you might feel afraid like you don't want to be associated with your linkedin page like you have a linkedin page you have not put your profile photo you're not talking about your journey who you are um to sell so social selling is a new trend not just on linkedin not just on twitter but for the world in general like your your name is now becoming a personal brand so the world is fully transitioning into an online marketplace and personal branding on platforms like linkedin will become critically important if i search for you and you don't exist then that means you don't exist so um you're not just selling a product, you're not just um, selling a program or a course, you're putting your name on the line. So yeah, some of the trends is SEO. I feel like SEO is a skill or maybe something we all need to learn to be able to generate content that is better. Um, building communities, think about your LinkedIn page as building a community. I see this is popular with Instagram influencers, 
happens. Like you see someone on a vlog saying, Hi, you know, giving a name to your community. And this goes hand in hand with also monetizing your content on platforms like Patreon. Like you're building a community of supporters. Chances are there's this principle, it's called the 80-20 rule. 80% 80 of your sales and 80% of your supporters is going to come from 20% of the people you already know. So it's not about finding new people out there. It's about getting the most from the few supporters you have. So giving them a way to support you on Patreon, building a community, constantly engaging with them, sharing, being vulnerable with them, sharing about your personal achievements, your personal struggles. I'm not talking about like those deeply, deeply deep personal struggles, but just putting a face to the name, it goes a long way for building trust and building a community. So also artificial intelligence, everything now, um, it's possible for those of you who have not been able to hire a social media manager, you can now use AI. AI is changing everything. Even Canva uses AI. Everything is using AI. So what this means is you have more power, um, more power at your fingertips. And you don't, you no longer have an excuse to not create content that is thought provoking, that is generating engagement. So um, yeah, let's go to the next slide. Yeah, so I think from here, maybe you can take a few questions, then we enter into a live demo. But I wanted to mention um, this, I put this here, in the one guaranteed way to connect with your core audience begins by connecting with their desire to connect with real people and learning how to tell stories while delivering value. At the end of the day, we are, for all of us on this webinar, we are here to connect with people because in that connecting with real people, that's how we are going to be able to get money. That's how we are going to get visibility. So it's about standing out and you can't stand out without being vulnerable. You cannot stand out without sharing your why. You also can't stand out um, if you're afraid. So I included this quote that says, it takes a village to raise a child. But if you reinterpret this, you get that it takes an online network to build your personal brand. So now we have so many tools um, 10 years ago, a lot of the tools we have now, like for, for you to be able to create a course or even an article or an ebook, you needed so much help and it would cost, it would be so expensive just to create content. But now you have a smartphone, you know, you have, you can schedule, you can create posts for three months. You can, you have, so much power at your hands the only person who's holding yourself back is your fear of not stepping into you know the next level if you're still afraid of monetizing if you're still afraid of you know saying your dreams saying this is where i want to go then that is the one thing that's going to hold you back content is one sure way um to take you to the next level regardless of your goal if you want to get a job if you want to get more sales if you want to um be seen if you want to deliver impact to the community. Content is a powerful, powerful way to engage, to build, and to grow your brand. So maybe let me take a few questions, then we can do some live demonstrations. We can use the Canva, we can use um, each, each of that. So let me take some of these questions. Okay, so there's one that says, being a social media creator or digital marketer, how does one handle social media addiction? Oh, that's a tough one. Hey, hey, hey. I think that's a very, very tough one. Um, uh, at some point, a uh, of time online. And I think, in the future, there's no way of escaping this. However, it comes to maybe what I can say is transform the way you're using content from 
morning till evening maybe try and start creating content if you're also only working on social media try maybe and step away for a bit uh, connect with reality connect with real people especially as a digital marketer i'm sure you're someone who is constantly online um thing like actually physically writing start engaging more with your real life activities and develop a discipline on saying no saying no to like let's say if your working hours is from five to six like make sure you have a strong discipline around like from six i'm no longer using my phone or my computer and i'm no longer doing any work so being very very strict with yourself when it comes to taking some time off so the other one is with the latest update of x algorithm how does verified account or non-verified account with low followers how are the two accounts affected by this in terms of content creation like i mentioned how twitter and linkedin work is if you make a post and it has not received any kind of engagement within the first few hours then that can already show you that you're not getting the traction you need for those with premium accounts or for those who have naturally the algorithm will always prioritize their content so you find that someone who's not verified you have to really really work so hard for you to be able to get the traction in fact even the the access you have for someone with a basic account versus someone with a verified account you don't even have access to the same audiences the algorithm will most definitely um we most most uh, it's going to prioritize the verified accounts so i'd encourage you if you're able to get a verified account hey, ethical considerations wow these questions are very philosophical eh? uh what are the ethical considerations of social media marketing hmm, well, that's a tough one um but like i said we are in an attention economy and all social media anything that is online the war or like the war is for your attention everyone wants your attention um your phone is constantly listening to you everything wants your attention so that they can be able to market to you so definitely this is a much much bigger conversation on i think i'll tie it back to that point i said like developing a strict discipline um there's also some tools you can use like um you block for those of you who are uh who are in tech and you're able to configure it's a it's a it's a plugin an extension you can use for chrome and for you can be able to curate uh filter out a lot of the ads you can filter out you can even use ublock to only view very specific things on your timeline only the things you want to engage so i mean yeah definitely everything just wants your attention even this like even how i closed even in my last statement uh one of my last statements i was just saying everything is about um getting someone hooked using a post hook to get traction so everything is really just about getting someone's attention so what role does social media play in the customer journey from awareness to conversion and retention like i said it's really about uh uh, great compelling storytelling being able to get the attention of the person who is your target audience so if you haven't gotten if you haven't roped someone in let's say you've just done a post come on to a japata if they haven't gotten if they haven't felt compelled by your tweet in the first five seconds chances are they won't engage with you anymore and the algorithm is also tailored just like hey this is so i didn't even want to talk about this but algorithms are built almost similar to like how we are as humans if something is not engaging and is not striking then naturally it's not going to give you any kind of engagement so definitely um if you're not able to get someone's awareness catch their attention then most likely it's not going to convert to a sale it's not going to convert to them visiting your page and naturally then they won't be uh retained they won't be coming back to your page people are constantly engaging with where they find value where they find community where they find engagement um do you help people customize their linkedin um i personally don't help people customize their linkedin but i've mentioned 
um, learning SEO and I'm going to post in, I'll share a document with all of you guys that has more resources. I'm going to post a course there that's going to help you customize your LinkedIn and get the most out of the creator feature on LinkedIn. So just three more questions, then we do the live demo. How can businesses analyze the data from social media campaigns to refine um, their strategies? I think uh, if you're using analytics and you can be able, if you're using LinkedIn, if you're using Twitter, I think all platforms these days have analytics. So if your analytics are very, very key, and if you're not yet using analytics, not yet tracking, then maybe that's also an error on your part. So let's, the. I don't like using this quote, but I'll just say it. Sometimes numbers don't lie. If people are not engaging with your content, this is going to transfer directly to your sales. This is going to transfer directly to uh, whatever goal it is you're working towards. So always keeping track of what are the keywords people are engaging with, getting on board on the things that are trending, uh, constantly having a model for putting out content. Let's say if you're going to do three posts twice a week and you're also going to be engaging with the pages that you want. I think having a strong model for engagement, having a, a strong discipline around looking at your analytics, not just looking, but also tailor making them. If you find that you're getting a lot of uh, engagement with people maybe from a different country, you need to also be on trend or check maybe what are the trends in their country? Why are they engaging with you more? Yeah, so just use your analytics as a map on where to go. Then why is it essential to have lifestyle content posts in different social media platforms? Um, I think maybe hard answer is, is lifestyle. It's about building community and social selling. And so I find like that goes hand in hand with lifestyle. Like people want to know the face behind uh, what you're posting. So posting something personal, not deeply personal, but like sharing, uh, okay, hey, here I am, or this is what we are doing. Um, showing, the, you've seen this, uh, how like even big companies will post maybe their personal, they'll be like, oh, today we had a birthday at the office. So just sharing stuff um, is really about connecting with the people. It's not all the time you're shoving products down your customers' throats or down you know, all the time motivating, all the time, you know, sometimes it's also just to share a story, connect with people. Yeah, it's about building community. So with the boom of AI in social media tools, how do copyright and privacy policy affect you as a brand? I've even seen, um, it's a very good question, a boom of AI in social media tools, how do copyright and privacy policy affect you as a brand and your content? Um, well, let me tackle with... I think copyright and privacy, it depends because sometimes you don't know what, I was seeing that there's, there's even a court case on someone who, uh, and we're going to see this a lot. Like you just go to chat GPT, it generates for you content, you go and post it blindly, then you actually find that maybe it was, it, it, it has been retrieved from someone else's thoughts. So, I mean, definitely it's a double-edged squad, like uh, be very careful, still, um, don't mindlessly post. You can also post a disclaimer. Um, I was seeing that with the new, for those of you who use WordPress, with the new WordPress uh, update, every page comes with a privacy policy and it comes with also like a disclaimer so that you can just be able to safeguard yourself. And for those of you also familiarize yourself with um, CC, creative, this creative licenses, creative licensing and familiarize yourself with some of those licenses, how to put a disclaimer and things like that. So I feel that definitely affects you as a brand. If you're caught, if you use copy AI, or if you use chat GPT and you're gotten on grounds of plagiarism, I mean, I just wish you all the best, but be sure to do your due, due, due diligence. If chat GPT generates for you curriculum content, run that curriculum content, um, use Grammarly to check for plagiarism, use the tools you already have. And like, yeah, just be smart about the content that you're using AI to generate on your behalf. And you can also put a disclaimer that all of this has been derived from like chat GPT, provided you're not using it to make a profit um, and you've put in your disclaimers, then I think 
you are hey i mean i, I can't i can't really speak for everyone but at the same time just stay safe but uh we are seeing a lot of this is where like digital rights are coming in like in the future we're going to see a lot more legal fallback like a lot of legal issues and ethical issues are going to come up with the use of um more ai tools so i think this is the last question i'm taking because time is really going other than more or added AI features on these social media tools, what are some current trends in social media marketing that business um, should be? Other than more or added AI features on these social media tools, current trends in social media marketing that businesses should be aware of? Well, I think for me, uh, I'd say um, social selling, um, not just selling as a brand, but also selling as the individual and building community. So moving from moving from being a brand to being a community and having a community mo model, like your customers are no longer customers. They're part of your community now. So it's more about retaining, building a relationship with the existing customers and so forth. That's what I can say. So I want us to um for those of you who have never used um chat gpt i mean chat gpt or canva i just wanted to do maybe a live demo where i can show you how to create uh content then uh we also generate a post hook uh using chat gpt and maybe copy ai then i'll share the link to the extra resources and yeah, we can have our final Q&A. So just give me a bit to share my screen. Oh, okay. So this is um, Canva. For those of you who've never used it, let's say you want to use this. This looks good. You see how easy it, it is? So you can just say customize this. So it's very easy for you to, to change the wording, uh, put in the pictures. Let's assume it's already done because of time. So we can just come here and say share, um, then download, or you can even share it directly. You can share it as an MP4 video. Let's get it. We we'll say download, then it's going to download for us. So in the meantime, you can come and use um, copy AI. So before this session, I'd asked for, I just typed in, create a blog post about the importance of content frameworks in technology. And you can see it created a blog post for me, the crucial role of content frameworks in technology. And it's a long post, uh, so you see in a matter of seconds, you already have, um, <clears throat> something that is you already have content so then you can come here and say 
rephrase phrase the post and make it um and make it quirky for a young audience. I'm just typing anything really. Let's see the results. Ah, just look at that. Isn't this brilliant? Like you already have um, why content frameworks are the coolest kid on the tech block. Hey there, tech savvy peeps. You know what's super important when it comes to technology and marketing? Just look at that, why they shake things up. So uh, content frameworks are like the Avengers of the tech world. You can use copy AI to rephrase, rename, <laughs> reward anything you want. So that's what I wanted to show you then. I don't know if I'd opened uh, copy AI, I mean chat GPT. So for chat GPT, I'd already typed in like, let's see what I'd, prompt, I'd prompted it. Okay, so I'd asked, please create a LinkedIn post for women in technology on how to enhance their personal brand and generate a catchy post hook with hashtags on the same. I've already explained to you the importance of, importance of having a content framework. So this is the LinkedIn post, empowering women in tech, elevate your personal brand for success. Hey, blah, 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 blah. Then I want you guys to see the post hook. So now this, this hook is what you'd likely post on your LinkedIn, calling all tech savvy women ready to amplify their influence, unleash the power, etc, etc, etc. And you can use ChatGPT to generate as many, many, many post hooks as you want. You can tell it to rewrite the rewrite the post hook. Let's just do something crazy for unemployed young women. And let's just see the outcome. Uh, here it is. Attention, ambitious young women of Kenya, ready to reshape your future. Let's embark on a journey together to boost your personal brand. ETC, ETC. So isn't that awesome? So um, because time is really gone, I just want to also show you. Um, yeah. So this is an example of what I told you. This is Hassel Sasa. This is a shop page that I like. The address KE. They are a digital magazine. Um, download the app, create your page, be able to start selling, whether it is your guides, your articles, photos, anything. So here, yeah, the address KE, a repository of exclusive media. This is an example of a shop. Uh, so here, here is an example of the healing of a nation. This is an article. You can buy it. It's 25 shillings. You have the occult origins of contemporary music in Kenya, 70 shillings. You can write your book. You can write your e-guide, anything, and you can be able to sell it on Hustle Sasa. I'll now also show you uh, Gumroad. So this is Gumroad. I haven't posted anything, but you can create an online course, an ebook, widgets, templates, anything you want, and you can be able to sell it. Let's say discover products and see what they're selling. So people are selling comic books, a documentary film stream. You see even this session, we could have sold it here on Gumroad. Then once you buy, we send you the link to join the Zoom. So yeah, from $15, five, you can be able to start selling your courses, design, drawing, painting, fitness, health. If you're in fitness, Create a, you can create a workout program, put photos, use Canva to put photos and start selling ETC, ETC. So then I wanted to show you guys Buffer. Oh, I thought I'd, um, I thought I'd created an account on Buffer. Oh yeah, it is. So you can use Buffer to post cross platform. So you can use Buffer to create anything so if it's if you're on, on mastodon to create a landing page tiktok create your post tailor make it and use buffer to post and schedule you can create content three months in advance and buffer is going to post for you on 
each platform. So it's just a way of automating. And there are so, so many tools of automating tools that are available right now. There's Bubble. You can even be able to use, there's so many no-code tools that you can use to get your personal brand running. Um, yeah, I mean, let me just not dive in. Then I wanted to show you um, an example of my LinkedIn. I think I have a premium account for LinkedIn. So as you can see, obviously I've not been posting. These are my followers. So ideally this would be based on the amount of these are my, this is my, these are some of the SEOs that I use. But provided you're not creating content, you also won't be able to generate engagement. And the more you don't post, the more your page is not visible. So definitely I need to step up my game. But yeah, so these are some of the ways you can use um, SEO on your LinkedIn page. So Sharon, I hope you take note. Uh, I think even if you don't have a premium account, you can still be able to set up your tagline. Let's look at my profile. This is my tagline, digital rights, UX researcher, community builder, UX designer, and things like that. So th those are some of the ways you, you make sure, I make sure when someone searches for digital rights in, maybe you can try and search on yours, search digital rights, search UX, maybe you'll be able to see my profile pulled up. So I think, yeah. Um, what else didn't I show you guys? Yeah, I think uh, that's all time has allowed us to be able to cover. I also wanted to show you an example. I have his permission, my friend. Um, my friend just started posting on LinkedIn and he posts and he engages so much. And through this, he's been able to really grow. In the past four months, he was able to get a job. Please don't go searching for him. Um, I hope he doesn't know that I'm posting, but just an example of how Constant engagement can grow your brand from zero to a hundred. You can see, um, I think I even read a post um, on Twitter that he was being recognized as a voice for the industry uh, when it comes to engineering, when it comes to uh, uh, alternative energy sources. So I just wanted to show you guys a real life example. When it comes to use AI to create content, use your mind, use your skills to be able to think of creative ways you can use your unique individuality, what you know to generate content and grow your brand from one place to, uh, to, to be able to grow your brand to, from where you are to where you want to go. Um, I don't know if I'd posted something else. Um, I think that's it i hope for those of you who are not aware of these tools maybe i also wanted to show you guys how notion how notion for looks like for those of you who have never used it like i said i'll post uh um so maybe just sharing some of my so here's how it looks like you can fetch articles from anywhere and it's going to embed it for you the concentration like you can really use this to to create endless endless content you see how it embeds for you like i think this is a this is a what do you call it like a journal uh, look at that these are just notes and you can be able to share them with your friends. As you can see, this, I've been able to share it with someone and I can even be able to share it with you guys. I've seen that you can also use, um, you can also use Notion. You can use Notion to create, like it, it's AI powered now. So you can be able to hey, plan, brainstorm, do so much. I feel like we cannot even exhaust. There needs to be like a separate course on just how to use um, Notion. And Evernote is just as powerful, but I think Notion right now is on top of the game. So let's look at this. This is like an example, IT support center, hardware requests. If you guys are sharing resources at your workplace, maybe I should have even posted that uh, Google, like our Google doc on Notion, but yeah. So I'm going to post the, 
I'm going to post the link to the resources here in the chat box. You can have a look at that. For Sharon, you'll find the LinkedIn cost there. Any of the resources that I've mentioned, you're going to find them on that doc. Um, reach out to me if you want to, because I know it's all fun and games, but if you want to get the most out of chat GPT, if you want to get the most also out of your LinkedIn and you're available for a personal consultation, um, you can reach out to me. Um, reach out to me on LinkedIn, DM me, and you can be able to uh, grow from there. And hopefully maybe this was, there's so much for us to share. Hopefully if we are able, we, we can try and do another session for those of you who are interested and make this more engaging. We can request Pony Techno Girls to organize for another one next month. And we can start to maybe chart your progress and yeah, see what more we can do. So there's a link, I've posted it in the chat box. Yeah, so let's do some more questions. Yeah, well, thanks for your comment. This was amazing. Um, yeah, this was also enlightening. I hope you've at least learned of a new tool. Even if you won't be doing content creation, just, I was, I've been reading a book called, okay, it's around just creating your own personal knowledge system. So when you're reading a book, being able to take notes, especially if you're planning to build a career, like let's say now me, I'm in digital rights. What I know now is only going to keep growing and growing. So use technology as an external brain. So you can use tools like Notion to consistently document your journey, work on projects, take notes. Um, you can use it to create a relationship between your notes so that anytime you're asked a question, you're able to easily retrieve easily document. It's not everything you're going to post on social media. Um, so yeah, some of the things you only want to post for yourself or your, for, for your close friends. So hopefully you can use these tools to um, at least find an easy way to challenge yourself, challenge yourself to share more, challenge yourself to get a Canva account, ch challenge yourself to um, attract employers if you're job seeking use your LinkedIn to create content that attracts employer. When you write your tagline, write who you envision to be. Don't write where you're coming from, write where you're going, establish yourself as an authority. You already have what it takes. So yeah. Um, so I don't know if Joanne, maybe, or Aisha, are there any more questions? <laughs> 